What's up? Hey, today we are finally talking about my postpartum training routine, what I have done to make a full recovery after having a baby so I can get back to running, lifting, doing higher intensity and impact activities without re-injuring my body or peeing or leaking or having any of those things. I am currently 16-ish weeks postpartum. Today we're going to do a week by week recap to take you through the journey, what I was expecting, what I was doing because not every stage has gone, I mean, exactly according to plan. But before we get into it, I want to say a huge thank you to Koros for partnering with me on today's video. You've probably seen me wearing this watch before, but if you're not familiar with Koros, they are a technology company committed to helping you improve your athletic performance. So I started wearing Koros watches a couple years ago, basically when I more seriously got into running. And what I love about Koros is beyond just making like a great watch, a great physical product. They've really built out the tech backend in terms of what information they give you and how they translate that into actionable tips for your running. So I know what you're thinking. Like I'm not a professional athlete. Why do I actually need data on my training? I'm not a professional athlete either. When I say I more seriously got into running, I just mean I started following a structured training plan rather than just running randomly to burn calories. And I found this information really helpful because they give you metrics related to fatigue, intensity, how your body is recovering, metrics related to form. So you can actually run more efficiently and ultimately get better faster so we'll talk more about running later in today's video but if you want to check out Coros for yourself i'll put a link in the description box down below they've done a special offer for our community where when you buy any watch they will also give you a free accessory so zero to six weeks initially I felt out of body. I felt so weird in my body, like my muscles were sleeping. I posted this video to my IG and that was very much so how I was feeling. I wasn't so much in pain as I just felt inflamed and I very much so did not feel like myself. Now, after that first week, that's when I feel like things really started turning a corner for me. By about two weeks, I felt like my recovery was going very quickly. I was able to do my longer walks without feeling a lot of pelvic fatigue or discomfort. I started getting back to gentle breathing and core exercises, you know, not quite weightlifting. I mean, I was lifting a baby, but like not weightlifting, but I was able to do gentle forms of exercise. Now, I feel like something we need to address is the six week myth. The idea that no matter how your pregnancy or delivery or postpartum has been going, the idea that you can just jump back to your old routine at six weeks. This is a complete lie. Six weeks is an arbitrary number. It's a general rule of thumb. It is a point in time where you should probably check in with your care provider to see how your recovery is going and figure out a path forward with your training. It's not all or nothing. Like we're just jumping right back into how we used to do things. And the reason for this is because your recovery, how long it takes you is going to depend on so many factors, including how your delivery went, whether it's a vaginal delivery or C-section, if you had any interventions, any complications, how your postpartum bleeding has been going, if you've had any pelvic floor symptoms like leaking, incontinence, heaviness, any of that. It's also going to depend on how much you've actually been recovering in those six weeks. Have you been on essentially bed rest or have you maybe been working or chasing around a toddler or doing other things? How well have you been sleeping? It's it's also going to depend on your health prior to, during, and post-pregnancy. Like there are so many things that are going to impact how long it actually takes you to make a full recovery and get back to your old style of training. Something that grinds my gears is when I hear women say, and this is by no fault of their own, but when I hear women say, oh, my OB cleared me for exercise, so I'm getting back to running at six weeks. OBs know next to nothing about training. And this is not a knock on OBs. It's just not their area of specialty. They are great at managing your pregnancy, delivering your baby, intervening if there are any complications throughout your journey. But at the six week appointment, what they're probably going to do is 
check out your stitches. If you had stitches, say, hey, these are healing well, or maybe we need to do something. If you have a good OB, they might screen for pelvic floor dysfunction, but what they should be doing when it comes to training is referring out to a pelvic PT and personal trainers who specialize in prenatal and postpartum training, which I'm just gonna toot my own horn a little bit. I did complete my prenatal and postpartum certification when I was up at like 4 a.m. every day. If you guys follow me on IG stories, you'll know there was a period of time where Bean just loved to wake up at like 4 a.m. So I decided to do a certification that time. So now we're prenatal and postpartum certified. Long story short, OBs should be referring out. I will stay recommending that every pregnant woman budget for at least a consult with a pelvic PT at that six weeks postpartum mark because they can do a much more thorough assessment of your recovery, how your body is doing, and then actually give you specific advice for how and when to return to training rather than just, oh, we're at six weeks, like back to usual. So I actually recorded at my six week pelvic PT appointment. I'm going to put that next. Okay. So the start of this clip, I'm rambling about how Bean had a blowout literally the moment we went in for my six week pelvic PT, like catastrophic and Bean the very new mom I was, I made the mistake of changing her before we went in because somehow I thought that would prevent what ended up happening. I forgot the diaper bag in the car. I didn't have a spare onesie. She ended up being a blanket baby. Very embarrassing. Live and learn. Back to the story. Rest of the appointment went great. So up until that point, I just kind of shared with her how my birth went, my birth story, a very consolidated version, not the 40 minute version. Um, you know, how I was feeling postpartum, how the first few weeks were. And when I came back from our little baby blowout, we did our actual assessment. So we started with an external assessment where she palpated my abs. She had me do some Kegels. She had me do some belly breathing. She was feeling for any separation, which we learned that my separation has fully closed. Um, which was actually kind of shocking. I didn't expect that because during my first midwife visit post baby, uh, the midwife checked me and she said, Oh, you have, did she say I had like a five finger separation? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know if she was lying because I heard that and I really tried at my first postpartum appointment to just let that go in one ear and out the other and not let it get to me. But I was a little scared when she said I had a five finger separation because like, but apparently my abs have completely closed now. So there is no separation remaining. My linea alba, that line of connective tissue that goes down between your six pack ab muscles, like down the midline that separates the sides, it has returned to being a good tension. So externally, everything is looking great. Then she asked if I wanted an internal exam. And I just said, look, I'm here on a fact finding mission. I want to get as much information as possible about what my body's doing, how we're doing, what I should be doing. There was no speculum. There was nothing icky, like when you're going for a pap or other types of pelvic exam, it was just like one finger. And then she felt the inside of the walls. So she kind of felt on the right side. Does that feel like any tension? What are you feeling there? Any pain? She did the same on the left side. For me, I felt a bit more tension on the right side. She said, are you right-handed? I'm like, yes, I am. My right side is my dominant side. So she said, that's perfectly normal. We did some breathing and she felt what a few Kegels felt like from inside to make sure that I was fully relaxing and fully contracting. I still had good control over that. So did my big inhale and relax, did my big exhale and contract and pull everything together like, hi, <laughs> with the Kegel. Um, she said my Kegels were good. We then did some relaxation only breathing. So she calls these reverse Kegels. Basically you do the big belly inhale where you relax and release all the tension. And then as you exhale, you're not contracting. You're just letting the air out. You're not creating any tension on the exhale. So we did a few of those reverse Kegels, like pelvic relaxation, breathing drills. And then she palpated each of the sides again. And she said, do you feel any less tension on the right side? And lo and behold, I did feel less tension on the right side. So those reverse Kegels really do work for helping to release tension and relax things. Six to 12 weeks postpartum was an exciting time for me because I got back to filming for the Team Plans app. I got back to weightlifting and I was excited because I had the goal of getting back to running by 12 weeks. Now, based on the current literature, 12 weeks is considered the earliest that you should get back to running or other continuous high impact activities postpartum. Reason being that when you do high impact activities, that results in a sudden increase in intra-abdominal pressure 
and the landing forces from running or jumping can easily exceed upwards two times of your body weight, so they require significant pelvic strength. Now, during pregnancy, your insides are quite literally rearranged. Some things get lengthened, some things get shortened. It's not uncommon to develop imbalances or difficulty firing muscles and activating muscles that maybe you had no trouble with before. And if you go back to running and you're lacking pelvic strength, speed of contraction, endurance, any of those components, if they're missing, that is going to drastically increase your risk of injury or complications, whether that's a hernia, a muscle tear, losing balance and falling, urinary incontinence, leaking, pelvic organ prolapse, things that you probably don't want to be experiencing. So even though during that time, I may have felt like I could hypothetically be running, just because you can does not always mean you should. So here are some clips from my first weightlifting session back. This was literally the day after my six week pelvic PT and I followed a workout from the Pregnancy Friendly series in the Team Plans app. I'll put the exact one on screen, but as a general rule of thumb, the way you train toward the end of pregnancy is a good starting point for six weeks or whenever you get the okay to return to training. This applies to impact, intensity, how much you're lifting, etc. Toward the end of pregnancy, your pelvic floor is fatigued, your body may be achy, your center of gravity has shifted, meaning you may struggle with stability. And when you think about it, a lot of the same things are going on at six weeks once you've had and are healing from having a baby. So it still makes sense to take your time warming up, do lots of activation breathing, mobility, then ease back into lifting gradually. You think body weight and lightly weighted exercises in the eight to 10 or more rep range, focusing on syncing your breathing with your movement. Something my pelvic PT told me is that when you return to weightlifting, it's tempting to hold your breath during training. You just get really clenched up when you're focusing, which ultimately leads to more tension in your pelvic floor. This is not always a good thing as having too tight of a pelvic floor can also lead to problems. So she recommended always doing a set of reverse key at the end of training to help lengthen and relax the pelvic floor. As I got more comfortable with training, I progressed the difficulty and started getting more back into my athletic style. Some of the early workouts I did were actually inspiration for the inner athlete challenge. So a lot of functional core, single side exercises, the glutes got a lot of love. If you want a more in-depth video on mom butt, let me know. Basically, when you're pregnant, it's common to develop postural imbalances that lead to glute weakness, and I was definitely feeling it. Because I wasn't running yet for cardio i was mostly walking doing some spin bikes some body weight circuits my biggest worry was when i finally did get back to running i would be recovered but so out of shape from cardio that it would be brutal getting going again so most of the sessions i did were low to moderate intensity to build back up my aerobic base so 12 weeks was a big milestone for me i had built this up to be a big thing in my head i was so excited for that appointment with my pelvic pt i didn't film this one and i actually did have have another pelvic PT somewhere between the six and 12 week mark. I forgot if it was like nine weeks or 10 weeks or something like that. It was around the holidays. So everything got a bit jumbled, but basically at that middle appointment, she said, okay, your recovery is going well. You're feeling good. You're not really experiencing any symptoms. It's okay. If you want to experiment with like, you know, a few seconds of jogging here or there, adding like a little bit of speed, a little bit of impact to your training, just to test the water so that we can have an idea of what we are gonna do at 12 weeks. So I started doing that, whether it was like nine weeks or 10 weeks, whatever, right? I did like 30 seconds of jogging on the treadmill. I did a little bit more speed, like kind of like half plyo type exercises. I started experimenting with that. I was not experiencing any symptoms. I didn't have any pelvic heaviness, any pelvic fatigue. Everything was going good for me. So at that 12 week appointment, she gave me the all clear. She said, yep, you're good to get back to continuous running. However, this was also when Bean went from being a sleepy little newborn to forgetting how to sleep. The sleep regression started for us shortly after three months and continued until basically this past week. Now, before having a baby, I knew nothing about baby sleep because why would I? And so when I heard mom say that it's challenging when your baby won't sleep, I just assumed that that meant because the baby wasn't sleeping at night, the baby was sleeping during the day, which doesn't exactly mesh with most people's schedules because like, you know, we usually sleep at night and do stuff during the day. Boy, was I wrong. Babies are not like you and me. When I say they forget how to sleep, I quite literally mean they forget how to sleep. They're not adults. They don't have properly regulated sleep and wake schedules, at least at around four months. They're working on it, but it's not like when 
adults pull an all-nighter and then the next day you're really tired and you can consciously recognize that you're tired and so you look forward to having a nap the less a baby sleeps the less they want to sleep and so even if they were up all night fussing it's not like the next day they're just gonna have an eight hour long nap in reality at least what happened for me if she had a really rough night of sleep is you would end up with a series of random you don't know when they're gonna happen 20 minute naps separated by shrieking and fussing when we were in the thick of those sleep struggles I was lucky if I could get 30 minutes to do something for me but I also couldn't plan for when that 30 minutes was gonna happen it's not like I could say oh at like 11 a.m. I'm gonna have 30 minutes and I can be ready for it so I got my filming for the team plans app done and that was great but I did not get back to running which was disappointing as for what's next I am I'm speaking it into existence going to start running again and I actually mean this like with intent because the four month sleep regression was really hard not having any predictability to my routine like literally not even having a pocket of time where I could run but now that Bean is having on a somewhat consistent basis hour-long naps a few times during the day we're getting longer stretches of sleep at night I feel like I'm getting closer to being in a place where I can actually commit to following a running training plan, which is really exciting for me. In the meantime, of course, I'm going to keep going with my athletic style training. I love the workouts we did throughout the inner athlete challenge. I love that I can just take 30, 40 minutes out of my day, get my body moving, feel great about what I'm doing, feel strong, fast, capable, like all of those things that I want to feel in my body. I feel like I've made a lot of progress mentally these past few weeks. Like, I mean, this whole postpartum journey up until this point, because the mental struggles have come in waves for me. The biggest struggle since having a baby has been the lack of routine. I mean, of course we encountered that like at the sleep regression, but even before that, I mean, it's just such a big adjustment having a baby. And as much as you think that you are prepared, I don't think you can ever be prepared fully for just how much your life is going to change. And I don't say that as a bad thing, but it's just like, you don't know what you don't know. One thing I think I did a really good job of postpartum was working to maintain a very body neutral attitude, right? Just focusing on what my body is doing, focusing on how capable I feel in my body, why it's important to move my body, how good it feels to move my body, like the amazing thing that my body just did in creating a new human being. I think I did a really good job of putting in the work to stay body neutral. Now, of course, I'm happy that, you know, my arms are getting their definition and tone back. Like I've really been liking how my shoulders and arms have been looking. I don't really know if anything is showing up there. I've, I've been feeling very good about my body. Something kind of funny though that I've noticed is I put so much effort into staying body neutral and into not beating myself up on any of the changes that may have occurred after having a baby that I thought I had bypassed. I had avoided the bounce back mentality. I was so focused on how the bounce back mentality manifested physically that I completely ignored the other aspects of it. And I realized that since having a baby, I've actually put a lot of pressure on myself to bounce back to my old identity, to bounce back to my old routine, to being a productivity queen, to training like an athlete, to, you know, being really impressive with things. I don't really know the right way to put it, but I've been putting a lot of pressure on myself to go back to my old identity, which I did identify with being very physically fit, with being very productive, with being very hardworking, with having a schedule, with having a routine. And while I think it's good to have goals and have structure and of course, you know, do things that make you feel like yourself. I know that some of this pressure came from a place of insecurity. I don't know if everyone experiences this and maybe if it was a little bit amplified because this was an unplanned pregnancy, but I felt really insecure like during pregnancy and, and especially I think postpartum that people would look at me differently after having a baby and don't attack me. I'm sharing an insecurity. I'm not saying these things are true, but these are the things that my brain sometimes tells me that I worried that people would look at me with sympathy or people would look at me as like 
good for her for doing that because she's a mom, you know, almost insinuating that I'm less capable because I've had a baby. The idea that having a baby would diminish me, that it would take a piece of me. And I think that's why I was clinging and fighting so hard to just bounce back to this old identity of me before having a baby. I think that's part of why I got so upset that I couldn't just jump right back into running or I couldn't find time for running in my routine. So something that I've been reminding myself of and something that I'm trying to step into mentally and, you know, actually believe is that I'm a mom and it's not I'm a mom, but it's I'm a mom and becoming a mother is incredibly challenging. And again, I always try to balance statements like these. Like I do not want to put a negative light on pregnancy or motherhood because I think there's so much of that online, but it is very challenging. And I am somebody who does like challenge because every challenge is an opportunity. And some days it is incredibly hard to see challenges as opportunities because it just feels like they're breaking you down and breaking you down and taking so much of your energy that it never feels like you're going to have time to get back to a routine or time to move forward on the things that are important to you. But challenges are also opportunities for growth. So that's what I'm trying to step into. I hope that made sense. Uh, that is it for today's video, but definitely comment down below. Let me know about your journey. If you want to check out Chorus for yourself, I'll put that link down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.